Uncharted El Enigma de Penitence is the new for 2023 attraction at Port Aventura. This is an enclosed multi-launch coaster themed to the Uncharted franchise. This gave the Spanish theme park another much needed indoor attraction, but how is it compared to the other enclosed coasters worldwide? Find out in this review of Uncharted. Port Aventura opened back in 1995. While the park has been lauded for its great theming, they shockingly did not have a single dark ride for its first two decades of operation. These rides are great options for story-driven attractions and also to escape inclement weather. Port Aventura Resort's recent investments have been heavily focused on indoor attractions. The adjacent Ferrari Land theme park added two simulators in 2017. Then the resort's main park added the Sesame Street Street Mission Dark Ride in 2019. And most recently in 2023, the park added an indoor coaster, specifically an intimate multi-dimension coaster with multiple launches and trick elements. The ride is themed to Uncharted. This is an action-adventure franchise following a treasure hunter named Nathan Drake. Uncharted starred exclusively as a video game franchise in 2007, but it recently received a popular live-action film in 2022 starring Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg. The latter is what Port Aventura's ride takes most of its inspiration from. The coaster is placed in the far west section of the park. When it was under construction, fans were worried a giant show building would feel out of place at such an immersive park. While the back of the building is a bit unsightly from angles outside the park, the facade looks amazing from within the park's boundaries. It looks fit for a Disney park. The building looks like the cross of Big Thunder Mountain and an Indiana Jones attraction. You have a golden brown mountain. The detail in the rock work is exquisite and there's even an ancient Aztec face carved into it. This mountain serves as a new backdrop for the far west area. Then the entrance into the building is a wooden train depot, matching the aesthetic of the other buildings in Penitence Village. While Uncharted has a lot of pre-existing lore, the park decided to create an all-new story for the attraction. In the 1500s, the Spanish army had 20 tons of Aztec treasure. They couldn't bring it all back to Spain at once, so they hid in a mountain and create a map to find it in the future. Centuries later, Nathan Drake, Sully, and Chloe discovered the map, and they go on a quest to find the treasure. But the villainous Landon Kilbride and his henchmen are in hot pursuit, leading to a treacherous adventure with weaponry, booby traps, and a hallucinogenic green gas. While Intamin supplied the coaster, Sally Darkrise handled the theming. The indoor portion of the queue line is a lot to see, the first room is a series of switchbacks and western paraphernalia all on the walls. The second room is home to animatronics of Chloe and Nathan. These figures look fantastic. Because guests are batched in the room that follows, this room sort of feels like a pre-show. The two are looking at a video monitor where Sully has discovered the Aztec temple. Groups of guests are then admitted into the next part of the queue line, which feels like a haunted walkthrough. You enter the same temple that Sully found in the video. You then navigate a series of tight corridors. It feels like a maze. The aesthetic changes seamlessly into the temple. You have atmospheric lighting and all sorts of booby traps. No live actors, but if you're towards the front of the pack, you'll get some jump scares such as a falling ceiling of spikes or air blasts from arrows flying overhead. If you're towards the back, the effects will have already triggered so you'll just hear the screams of those ahead of you, which is a bit of a bummer. The last part of the queue line is a very dark cavern. It's pretty difficult to see what's in front of you, but there are all sorts of stalactites on the ceiling, markings on the walls, and some additional video screens with the main characters. They introduce the villain Landon Kilbride and that mysterious green hallucinogenic gas. Then you reach the station. It's a large cave with some wonderful rock work and these glowing crystals. You can't really see the ride itself though. There's a separate unload platform, so trains arrive at the load platform empty. Then the park only lets enough people into the queue line to fill the next train, so you don't really get to peep further into the ride. I'm glad there's so much to see because this line moves at a snail's pace. This ride's capacity is awful. The trains hold just 12 riders each. There are 3 trains in total, but I believe only 2 were in use the day I visited. Not sure if that's the norm or not. The indoor portion holds about an hour's worth of people, but before that, 
There are a series of unthemed switchbacks outdoors. These are miserable if you get stuck in them. There are some temporary shade structures at least, and like I said, there's nothing to look at. Ever since opening, this rise routinely had one and a half to two hour waits daily, sometimes more. Three important touring notes. First, the ride has had some reliability issues in its inaugural year. That is not too surprising given the complex ride system. You have multiple launches, plus other unique elements, but hopefully this can be rectified in future years. Second, the ride tends to close before the park does, especially on days with long hours. The exact time it closes daily is posted on the park's website and app. Third, all guests staying at select on-site hotels had two hours of exclusive ride time on Uncharted in the summer. This perk was available for guests at Hotel Gold River, Hotel Colorado Creek, and Hotel Mansion de Lucy. The ride was scheduled to be open in the morning two hours before the park. But at least in my two days at the park, the ride opened a half hour late due to technical issues each day. I was optimistic I would be able to have a marathon on Charted during this hotel ERT, but the ride still had lengthy waits. Unless you were one of the first people into the park, the standby line was still one to one and a half hours in length during this time. So how can you beat the crowds on Uncharted? At this time, you cannot use the park's paid skip the line pass system. I imagine it'll be added to Express in the future though. I suspect it'll start off as a single upcharge like Street Mission, but sometime in the distant future, it may be added to the other levels. This will further snarl the standby queue though. The most efficient way to get on quickly is to be one of the first people on the ride. Guests at the Far West hotels have an inherent advantage here. This past summer, they had those aforementioned two hours of ERT, but even on days when the park doesn't offer this perk, these guests have their own dedicated entrance into the Far West area, right next to Uncharted's entrance. So those using the park's main entrance will typically already find a queue line there, and a lengthy one too. Alternatively, you can hop in line right before the ride closes for the day. This typically is the shortest the wait will be all day long. The fastest way to get on the ride seems to be the single rider line. The downside with this is that you do skip the immersive queue line, but you do get your own unique video screen outlining the story at least. On the day I visited, the full hallway took roughly 45 minutes. But as with any single rider line, how fast you go is variable and depends on group sizes. No matter whether you ride in the standby or single rider line, Uncharted is strict assigned seating. On all of my rides, I was assigned the front row. I've heard this is the best row, but I cannot speak from experience. The trains look and feel similar to those in Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts, just with single car trains. The vehicles have three rows of four. Riders are then restrained by lap bars. These restraints are fine. Once dispatched, you move forwards into a cave. More crystals illuminate. You then pass one of Kilbride's henchmen armed with a bazooka. It is the lone physical prop during the main ride experience. You don't have any fire or smoke, but there are some lighting effects at least. The vehicle will then spin like a top. This takes you into the main show building. It's pretty dark, but not dark enough to fully conceal the layout. You can still see the track ahead of you. You stop spinning and have a mild dip in the launch one. This launch is not too fast, but it has an okay kick to it. This is followed by a right hand turn in the dark with a light lateral kink to it. Then you move forwards and stop in front of this giant video screen. There, you'll see that Kilbride has found the treasure and tied up Nathan. His henchmen start firing automatic rifles at riders, but Chloe throws a rope towards the car. The vehicle, which is on a turntable, starts to rotate sideways. Meanwhile, a statue falls on screen releasing the fear gas. This allows the heroes to escape, but not before inhaling it in. I think this is why you get some funky elements next. You then have this unique sideways drop. It doesn't really have any force to it, but it's most certainly a different element. This leads directly into launch too. It has a decent kick to it, and since you take it sideways, you also get some laterals rather than being pinned against your seat back like most launches. Then comes a big spike. I believe this is the tallest point in the ride. You go quite a ways up it, 
so you get some weightlessness here. Even better, the car rotates on the way down. It's a fun effect. Then you pass over the same launch track again, speeding up a bit. You're again sideways, getting another jolt of laterals with the acceleration. You then hop upwards and whiz past the prior screen. You go past it too quickly to process what's shown. You then rise upwards and have a swooping drop to the left. The subsequent valley is solid positive G's. You then have a few more turns in the dark. Nothing too crazy. As for the visuals, you have a few lighting effects and some hanging bats, but that's it. The final launch has an OK kick to it. You then have a twist upwards and to the left. You pass a video screen with an apparition, and the vehicle also rotates sideways on the rise. You then come to a stop at the top, facing another video screen on your side. The protagonists are trying to stop the villain from getting away in a helicopter. You rotate so the train is now facing backwards. Then you slowly creep over a big drop, so you're facing a screen on the ceiling. The heroes throw a bomb at Kilbride. At this moment, the helicopter explodes and you're released down the drop. It's a 49 foot or 15 meter drop and again you're going backwards. And it's darn near vertical too. I expected to offer some airtime and or freefall sensation. But the trims unfortunately neuter the force. This element is all about the visuals and those do deliver. You then hit the brakes and return to the unload platform, spinning along the way. You then come to a stop ending the 2,208 foot or 673 meter long adventure. In terms of smoothness, Uncharted is excellent. It is glass smooth. Pacing is a bit harder to evaluate. As with many indoor story driven coasters, this ride deliberately has some show scenes that will intentionally break up the coaster bits. But I don't mind that. It moves the story along. And the ride kept me on my toes with the spinning vehicles, multiple launches, and surprise effects. I just wish the main coaster bit had a few more animatronics and sights to see. The two main screens are great. They're large and vivid, but the other visuals are a tad lackluster. Part of the problem is the sights during the pre-boarding experience are so good that your expectations are raised, and what you see during the ride pales in comparison. So what would I rate Uncharted? I would give this coaster a 7 out of 10. This is a fun indoor coaster. I absolutely love the ride system. The spinning is dynamic. Then you have some unique elements. The forces are fairly light, minus the spike and semi-punchy launches, but the darkened environment makes the coaster feel a bit faster than it really is, even if it's not pitch black. As for the theming, I love the look of the building, and there's so much to see in the queue line between the walkthrough sections, screens, and animatronics. I just wish the physical props during the main ride were more abundant, but the video screens do look good, and the story does flow based on all the backstory given in the queue line. Uncharted fits in perfectly at Port Aventura. It offers a radically different ride experience than their other coasters, and it can remain open even in bad weather. And the net ride experience compares quite favorably to other indoor coasters. It has decent theming. It has some visuals and peppy elements, just nothing too thrilling. The biggest con with this ride is the throughput and lengthy lines of commands. While the ride is fun, I don't quite think it's worth the 2 plus hour waits it can receive daily, so definitely utilize that single rider line if you can. So those are my thoughts on Uncharted El Enigma de Penitence at Port Aventura. What are your thoughts on this unique indoor coaster? Did the ride meet your expectations? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.